Hello and welcome to the Daily Meal for Saturday, the 17th of December 2022. Now, um, obviously, we don't have a game this weekend uh, anymore. It was postponed early doors. Um, so, what am I going to talk about in this video? Well, other teams did play. Basically, literally every other game has taken place. The only game that isn't is our one at Luton. So these are the results, um, as you can see. Uh, but what we are concerned about is where that leaves us. So we are now ninth on 32 points. We are one of four teams on 32 points, that being Birmingham, Swansea and Reading. But you can see there is basically a three points covering Stoke in 17 all the way up to Birmingham in 8. So it uh, could uh, could develop quite quickly in terms of what we are uh, going to see in our position in the... Uh, the league. So obviously we we now play Watford away. A very different Watford than the one we faced. They've got rid of their ship manager. Managed to palm him, palm him off on Luton. And they've got someone decent in now. So they have been doing well. They're up to fourth. Um, it doesn't look good in terms of us getting a result there because we're not very good, are we? Away from home. So let's have a look and see. Well, Watford are the sixth best home team in the league, and we are probably bottom now. No, twenty still twenty third. We are the twenty third um, best worst. Um, we're only got nine points away from home all season. Two wins and three draws. Um, yeah, well, you could say well we're probably overdue. Uh, in terms of points per game so a win against Watford may be uh, something that could happen I don't know I don't know but we'll see we'll see but yeah that's how the table is now we're down in right and then we basically have to wait and see how we do and how the other teams do on box to see where we get on now, we did have a statement issued by Steve Kavanagh today. Um, he's been doing these monthly kind of statements, usually at the beginning of the month. Um, now he's got this one now. I don't know if it's like the um, Christmas one, like, like the Queen's um, Christmas message. It's Kavanagh's Christmas message. I don't know, but uh, so let's have a read of this. Uh, I hope everyone is enjoying the build up to Christmas and that we're back in championship action again after what, in fact, felt like a very short break of the World Cup. It did, however, feel every bit as unusual as I suspect. We all predicted having to stop midway through a season, but it's great to be back, here, back at it again, and especially so during the festive period, which is always a great time in the football calendar. It was, of course, disappointing that this cold snap led to the postponement of our trip to Luton Town. We pushed for the earliest possible inspection to ensure supporters would have plenty of notice uh, if it was to be called off. And while it's frustrating for all concerned, at least we're, uh, we were able to achieve that. Uh, yeah, and it looks to be a good decision. Usually, when sometimes when you make these early decisions, um, you can get caught out if the weather changes... Uh, abruptly but um so it is set to rain from sunday afternoon so it will start getting warmer then when that rain comes in i think it's going to rain all day sunday like uh from one o'clock sunday all the way through to monday night like, it's going to be an absolute uh dreary day um so but by the time but 11 30 in loot and it probably would have wouldn't have been the best Best of situations, it still would have been freezing. I mean, it's pretty cold now. 
Um, I don't know if you noticed any racer fans out there, all of the horse racing was abandoned. It, none of it went, went ahead. So, uh, I'd like to thank everyone who made the very long trip up to Sunderland earlier this month. Uh, to have as many Lions fans there as we did, despite the early kickoff time, transport issues and wider cost of living crisis, is testament to your phenomenal support of the club year in and year out. It was heartening, though not remotely surprising, to see our fans display a banner in memory of Bradley Lowry, a young Sunderland fan who tragically died of cancer just aged just six in 2017. Uh, that is just another fine example of the Mill family acting off their own initiative to support others and everyone involved should be proud of their efforts. So too should Kelly Webster of the Lions Food Hub, who's received some much deserved coverage in the national media in recent weeks. What Kelly and those who assist her endeavours do in support to support families in need in the local area is nothing short of breathtaking. As of last month, it was uh, 50 separate families total of 280 people who were going to the food hub for weekly help uh, thanks to some quite incredible donations in the past few weeks including one remarkably generous individual who is supplying all those families with a meat hamper for Christmas the food hub can continue to keep up with the increasing demand and enhance its vital support which is especially important at this time of year In addition to Kelly's fine work, our thanks and praise also go out to Lions fan uh, Peter Millington Lee, who is once again in the middle of donating toys and money to a very worthy causes as part of another Arthur's run, and to Mel Bingham, who continues to expertly oversee fundraising for the Royal British Legion each year to generate over £20,000 again is just extraordinary, so well done to all of who contributed and more widely to all of those within the fan base who go above and beyond for a great causes day after day you are remarkable people uh, it was an honor for the club to recently host the launch of the efl's together supporting communities initiative uh, in relation to the cost of living crisis and of course especially pleasing that we were able to showcase what we're doing to help the community at this time also uh, our wednesday coffee mornings which have uh, been going since june 2020 are a great opportunity to come down to a warm space and enjoy free hot drinks, biscuits and cakes for a few hours each week. Uh, if you've not been to, to one, then please do come along as we want to help as many people as we can. There is much more on offer from the club also, uh, which you can read about by clicking here. Okay. Uh, include the doubt or details of what some other clubs are doing, which is important to highlight as well, given that we are all community assets. It's so important that clubs are able to continue uh, this imperative work. Now uh, that leads me nicely into what we at Millwall view as a very welcome development towards enhanced regulation of the sport. The fan-led review was released over a year ago and I personally have certainly felt very frustrated about slow progress being made uh, towards implementing some of its key recommendations. But reports in the media in recent days suggesting that something more concrete will happen early in the new year are encouraging. Behind the scenes, we have been in discussions with the uh, Football Supporters Association for some time now as we look to put in place a, a shadow board of fans that contribute to the club's broader decision making in the months and years to come. Uh, that is progressing well, but we are looking to speed up the process in light of these developments. As I've said before, we are committed to ensuring we are serving the fan base in every best way possible, and I'm a big believer in the many benefits of a shadow board. So I hope to be able to reveal more on that in the not too distant future. Uh, with this focus in mind, I'm pleased that we have recently uh, able to successfully ensure the removal of some well-documented restrictions on away fans when we made that trip to Sunderland. I wanted to mention this as it is important to stress that as a club, we do continually fight our corner on a range of issues, especially those which directly concern our supporters. After a spate of incidents involving away fans, Sunderland had taken a step to ban coins and vapes. But after extensive and productive consultation with them, we were grateful for the removal of these measures. Yes, that, that, that was a bit of a stupid thing to do. I think someone else has done it. though. Someone, there is another club that's done it. It might be Cardiff. Um, they banned coins and stuff. 
because now everything's cashless. So why would you need coins? Why would you need coins? Well, obviously you're bringing the coins in to throw at someone, aren't you? Because why would you need coins? Coins that everyone's been using for hundreds and hundreds of years. And suddenly, you're expected to stop using them because all the Zoomers are using their cards. So why can't you? Get with the times, Grandad. Stop using your coins. How about you fuck off? How about that? Uh, the throwing of vapes does appear to be an ever-increasing issue for clubs up and down the country. And we are unfortunately no exception. This season we've seen a sharp rise in such incidents of death. This has led to a long list of formal warnings to the club from the FA. It's so important that we are able to get on top of this as a club, and I urge anybody minded to act in this way, to consider their actions and the impact they have on the wall, including the vast majority of fellow supporters um, who also don't want to see these things happen. We won't want to take a very preventable step of banning such items such as vapes, but because of the actions of a tiny minority. Um, indeed, well, I don't know if you want to ban them because people are throwing them. You might want to ban them because they're a bit weird. Like, you're just sitting there and someone takes a puff and then you suddenly smell like apple blossom or fucking cherries. Like, what? Why are you, why is, why are, why is cigarette smoke now fruity flavoured? I mean, what has happened to this world? Why can't you just smoke woodbines like normal people? It's been a hectic and occasionally very concerning few weeks at the den while we work to overcome the issues caused by elite sports group limited our retail partner going into administration. It was unexpected and unprecedented and we had to jump over numerous hurdles before getting the lion store back open for fans. The cost of this to the club is into six figures and we are doing all we can to make as much of that back as possible through sales during this build up to Christmas. There has been a long list of complex and fast moving issues and we are working only with the stock available for us at this time. Moving forward it remains to be seen whether we will bring the retail operations back in house or outsource again and the reality is there are no perfect solutions here as football retail is a real challenge. I'd like to take this opportunity to publicly thank all those staff who have volunteered their time and effort to help out and of course to support us for your patience while we've worked to get back up and running at a crucial time for everyone involved. Uh, those of you in, t in attendance at last week's game against Wigan Athletic will hopefully have noticed some more enhancements to the van sewn around by the blue bus and the SC16 bar. I know the fans have been requesting the pie mash option for a long time, so we were delighted to open a new unit providing exactly that, thanks to Sodexo, our match day phone calls, catering providers and manzies. Uh, this we hope is a long term addition alongside the German food stall, which has proved to be incredibly popular since the start of the season. And game by game, you will also increasingly see more varied food choices inside the concourse kiosks as well. The fan zone area has come on leaps and bounds in the past few years. We are looking to develop it as much as possible with additional seating, cover and more. We will of course keep you all updated on our progress. Uh, what with the opening of Captain's Bar outside the front of the Barry Kitchen stand also. Hopefully we are showcasing our absolute commitment to improving the match experience for all fans, making your visits about so much more than just night to football. Uh, on a final note, we are several weeks into the next process for work on our new training ground site, which will be ongoing until the spring. But we are, of course, keen to get going with the project at the earliest opportunity, but are conscious of cost effectiveness, as any responsible organisation should be for such a huge step. Again, we will keep you all posted with uh, notable updates as and when they occur. All that is left for me to say is that I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. Best wishes, best wishes from all of us at Millwall for 2023. Uh, thank you for your immense support throughout these past 12 months. Steve. Well, thank you, Steve. There you go. So, yeah, the men's is, yeah, it's good. That was good. They do seem to be 
building it up bit by bit, bit by bit. It's kind of good. Um, again, he hasn't really said much about the the uh, club shop situation, but uh, just said that it's costing money and they're trying to get that back. So that's why they're on. all the humble stuff is on sale. Um, so it just goes to show how how much money they must be making up. Because if they're trying to get the money back, but they're still they're knocking off thirty percent. So they must be raking it in when they sell it at a full price. Why? Well, oh no, it well actually, they've obviously got had to cut the other people in, but now they own the stock. They pay for it or out of hand already. It's not on sale, or sale or return. So I guess they need to sell that to get some money. Back. So I guess that's what that's about. Um, the thing with the vapes, yeah, like. Whatever people got their throw, people, that people used to throw programs. That's not why they got rid of them, but people throw pro people. Someone threw this season ticket. I don't know if it was at Millwall or another club. Someone threw the season ticket, and I think they had to like go up and say, "Oh, can I have it back?" I, I, I was a bit pissed off when I threw my season ticket at one of the players, but I actually want it back. Um, can I have it? So whatever people have got their throw, so. What can you do? Um, that's how it goes. But uh, yeah, there's nothing really new here, is it? It's just a, a roundup of stuff that we've already known. But uh, nice of him to uh, put out this statement, especially today. Uh, when I've uh, got a stinking cold, my nose is plugged up, and I've bitten my tongue, so I can't speak properly. Isn't that fantastic? I just had to say all of that stuff to you. And now I'm going to have to speak even more because we've got these other stories coming up um, about the players now, uh, which are, I believe, are all from the South London Press. So they've been in overdrive. I don't know what, what, what they've been doing down there. But we've got four stories from them all involved in the players. So get ready for this because here it comes. Uh, this is Zion Fleming's instinctive finishing has been a major plus point uh, for Mia Walters' Dutchman joint top of championship scoring charts. Zion Fleming's instinctive finishing has been praised by Gary Rowett with, uh, with Mia club record signing joint top of the championship scoring charts. The Amsterdam-born attacker scored for the Lions in last weekend's draw with winger Fleck at the Den. Fleming has nine goals since arriving from Fortuna Sittard is one of 10 players in the league to be on that total. Only Sheffield United's Ollie McBurney has had as many shots. Uh, I think that's of the people who are on that, of the 10 players who are in that list. So he's got as many goals as, as 10 other people, but he's had a lot of shots. So in terms of goals per shot, he's, he's probably not that prolific, but he's a, uh, the number 10, isn't it? You're not a number 9. Um, it's a really good challenge for some of the other lads in that area because we've had opportunities and we have created chances around the top of the sound of the press. Billy gets a shot on the edge of the box midway through the second half. It's a really good opportunity for him. It's just seeing that composure and ability to pick the right shot at the right time. Zion has just got that instinct for it. It's not easy. He's done that for a long, long time. It would be really good for some of the other lads to look at him. He don't get many chances, and what he has done this season so far is that more often than not, he selects the right shots and hits things early. He's had a lot of shots. Uh, his mindset is that he wants to score goals, and he understands you have to keep making efforts and getting in the right areas to do that. The bit I like is he's really starting to read uh, where those forward balls are going to go. He's really starting to work hard to try and get a higher up the pitch, getting in and around the box. Maybe early season he was hanging out, and hoping one would drop for him. He's been really proactive in trying to find their spaces and positions. He needs the rest of the players to supply him with those chances. I said it before, uh, I watched a lot of him and knew how much natural talent he had. He scored some brilliant headers uh, previously, and that's something he can probably add as well, getting in the box and arriving on those, because he's very, very good in the air. Right uh, foot and left foot, he's been excellent. He's been clinical. 
maybe with a change of formation for him he's been a more natural one he's played that position a lot I spoke to him a lot early season and he found it hard to find space in the formation at times that we were playing this one is maybe a little easier uh, to recognize where those spaces are indeed so formation change big uh, boost for Zion Fleming there according to Gary Rowett now let's move on to Mason Bennett uh, this is also from London News Online. Uk. Mason Bennett's gratitude to Millwall for handing him a restart in his career. Mason Bennett has talked about how he's moved to Millwall's restart for his career. The 26-year-old signed a permanent deal in August 2020 after spending the second half of the previous season on loan in SE16. When he was just 15 years and 99 days old, when he made his debut for Derby County in 2011, to become their youngest ever player. He made 89 appearances for the Rams before he was cleared to leave. Um, that's before he was cleared to leave. That's, that's kind of, uh, what would you call that? Sweeping things under the rug. Let's see if they, they mention why he was cleared to leave later on in the story. Bennett is just six matches away from a century from the wall, he told the South London Press. I just roll out and try to play as many as I can. I thoroughly enjoyed my time here. It's been a real restart to my career, which I needed. Everyone has been well, so welcoming. Sean Williams, Jed Wallace, Hutchie, Coops and Savile have been great with me. Uh, it's tough to leave your family when they live three and a half hours away to come to your career, but it's a great environment to be in. Uh, I worked with a gaffer at Derby. I was in the dark there and he gave me an opportunity to come in. Probably because he had seen what I had about me. The work rate and training I put in at Derby. Uh, I was up in the air at Derby and it was a great coup in to get me in. I can't be more grateful and thankful for that opportunity. Bennett is still waiting for his first goal of the season. But called plenty of problems. But Wigan right back to Ndeyi Deregua. Last weekend the Latinx defender was booked early in the second half. The Lions attack are also setting up two excellent chances that will not finish by Andres Vogelsammer and Billy Mitchell. I always demand more from myself, but I could say I was trying to do the right thing, said Bennett. My instructions before the game were to get out of the back at every opportunity. I played with Tendai before I knew his strengths and weaknesses from being at Chesterfield. It was nice to be back out there. The last game I started was Birmingham. I'll always keep my head down. I'm on the side and I'll wait for my next opportunity. Indeed. Well, if you keep playing like that, son, and keep putting the crosses in, um, you won't have to wait out that long. Um, maybe you'll start against Watford. Who knows? Who knows? Now, let's move on now to this also from London News Online. What are they on? How many things are they writing? Uh, two ad tricks with three match balls treasured at home. Mills Tom Bradshaw on keeping football memorabilia. Tom Bradshaw has three match balls at home. But only two of them are for scoring hat tricks. Well, where's it, where'd the other one come from? Did he steal it? Uh, the Mills striker hit a second career treble in a 3 0 win over Watford in October, with all of the goals at the den coming in a 25 minute spell in the first half. Bradshaw has not scored since he stung the Hornets, but with 206 championship appearances under his belt, he has experience to know that a hot streak sends the ebb and flow. Uh, I was getting all sorts of things sent to me for weeks after that Watford game about it being the quickest hat trick of the season, Bradshaw told the South London Press. Football? It's a funny old game where things can completely fall into place. And that was the game for me. Sometimes you can go two or three games without a chance, and then you have three in the space of 25 minutes. Yeah, and then you don't score again for a couple of months. <laughs> You've always got to be ready for those chances. It's up to you as an attacker to put them away. Uh, in the Watford game, it was like a magnet. Ball shot from me in the right areas. The pick of Bradshaw's finishes against Watford was his first. Uh, nothing the ball down into the box, striking a half volley with the outside of his right foot past Daniel Batman. He had a similar kind of opportunity in Saturday's 1-1 draw with Wigan after being slipped in by Zion Fleming but produced more of a low flick. 
which Latex keeper Jamie Jones was able to push away. Uh, when I look back at goals in my career, a lot of in moments where I haven't got time to think, said Bradshaw, who joined Mill from Barnsley in August 2018. It looks like I've got time against Watford, but by the time I've edited it down and got to the ball, it is split second decision making. Uh, there were some parallels with Saturday, but the keeper made a great save. But Voggy is a bit unlucky that the ball has fallen to him at the back post. You make an instinctive call and you go with your gut. Uh, all of Mill's players signed the Watford match ball. Bradshaw's other hat trick was for Walsall in the EFL Cup tie at Forest in August 2015. It was 3-3 when Bradshaw won and converted a penalty in the 9th at the sea ground. I'm quite big on keeping memorability for my career, said Bradshaw. It's something I can look, look back on when I finish. Uh, it's nice to have those pieces, whether it's shirts, match balls, man the match trophies or champagne. It's stuff at the start of my career that I could only wish for, and I never take it for granted. Uh, I'm not allowed the, the Watford match ball in the living room for family reasons. It's got a place in a nice little cabinet in the office in our house. On my debut for Shrewsbury when I was 17, I came on in the 75th minute against Crew and scored twice. But after the game, Paul Simpson came over to me. Bounce the ball and say, keep that, it's something you're going to want to treasure. Uh, I've got loads of shirts and personal trophies, but the balls are probably what mean the most to me. You're scoring a hat trick in a professional game is a hard and rare thing to do, unless you're hurling all on. For the humans among us, it is a special day. Um, yeah, I guess. Um, so there's uh, Tom Bradshaw talking about balls. Tom Bradshaw talking about ball. Now, here we go to the fourth and final story from the South London Press, the London News Online. And they're talking about the Mitchells, the Mitchell brothers, not the ones from EastEnders, the ones from South uh, South East London. Uh, so South London's Mitchell brothers, Charlton, Zach, Mills, Billy, have a dream of playing in the same team. Yeah, which team though? Charlton or Millwall? Or a third one. Uh, there are new Mitchell brothers in town, but Zach and Billy are very unlikely to ever be feuding like their Albert Square counterparts. Despite this being at despite being at rival South London clubs, Zach, 17, is an emerging talent at Charlton Athletic, who has made his first team breakthrough this season. The centre back signed a three-year professional deal in July, has made five senior appearances including back-to-back -back starts in the Annex most recent matches. Well, Jesus, he's 17 and he's, he's played five times for the first team. I know it's League One, but damn, that's that's impressive, 17 years old. Uh, big brother Billy, 21, is further along his football pathway, firmly established as a fixture in Mills midfield. He is seven games away from racking up a century. Um... We're very close, said Zach. A lot of people say, wouldn't it be great to play against each other? But we've always talked about the best thing being if we could play together at some stage in our career. It's quite hard considering we're at Charlton and Millwall. Well, not really. You should have just said, you should have just not signed that three-year contract and just moved to Millwall. I mean, what are you doing, son? What are you doing? Uh, I definitely owe a lot of my success to him. But this is Zach talking now. He's always been that figure to look up to. I can always go to him for, for advice. He understands the journey because he's experienced every step. My parents always joked about him never being easy on me. He'd have the ball and make me go and get off him. Stuff like that helps build that competitiveness. I'm not saying I would shy away from playing against him. Uh, I definitely love that as well. Uh, he has given me tips and they are all not all on the pitch. It's also about professionalism, being punctual, punctual and being kind to all the staff so that they get to know you. He told me to go out and give uh, my all every day when I train. And there's some pictures there. Family photos. Uh, both siblings of the sport dad Paul, who played non-league for Thames Me Town, and mum Emma. Uh, if we did play against each other, they wouldn't know what to do, said Zach. So they've never played against each other, like, in a regulated game uh, well I guess well, this is one's 21 and one's 17 
that's a four year difference so yeah I suppose they would have missed each other in age groups uh, yeah I guess um, I'm really grateful for their support my dad was a semi pro and he'll give me the right information after the game quite critical but in a positive sense to try and get the best out of me my mum is always there for emotional support they are both at a lot of games uh, they travel Mitchell earned the admiration of then child boss Ben Garner for how he reacted to making the mistake that led to a goal in a 3-2 EFL trophy loss at Plymouth in late November. In the opening of that game, I thought I was doing quite well, said Mitchell, who was signed by the Alex at under 7 level. Whoa, damn, so that probably explains why he hasn't left. He's been there for 10 years. So just to, to up sticks and leave and come to me all be a bit of an undertaking. Uh, so when that happens, it does knock you back a bit, but then you try and recompose. Oh, I just said to myself that no one is going to remember you if you just shy away from the challenge and that nobody is going to be impressed if you just pass it side to side all the time. I kept trying to get on the ball and do something different, whether that is driving in or playing a longer ball as well as really focusing on the defending side. It's almost a blessing in disguise that it happened because you sort of test yourself in terms of how you react. It definitely was a good challenge and I came out of it stronger. I love to keep staying around the first team. We've got a few injured players close to coming back. And I'm trying to make my mark while I'm here. Uh, Mitchell flitted between midfield and defence until his scholarship years. But last season, the Cubs under 21s played a back five and he would join the midfield when the team were in possession. He's displayed for Amza Serra's title winning side, helped earn a long term professional contract. Uh, being here so long uh, made it mean that a little bit more, said Mitchell, who played for Junior Reds and Phoenix. Uh, getting that deal was probably the first proper starting point in your career. It was a bit of no brainer to sign it. Uh, I've enjoyed every minute in this club. All the coaches over the years have added something a bit different. But in the scholarship phase, uh, Hamza. Was pivotal in teaching me certain tactics and developing me in that centre back role, nailing down on those defensive qualities along with Steve Avery. Uh, at the start of last season, it was about my body shape uh, when I was marking in the box. When I first got put into the role, I was perhaps focusing on the ball too much. Steve Avery is really keen on 1v1 defending and heading all the finer aspects. Jason Pierce has come into the coaching now. Uh, watching players who, who are in your own first team is definitely helpful. And it ends there abruptly. But So there you go, Zach Mitchell. Um, finding his way in the uh, child first team. And the problems that they got at the early age of 17. Just signed a, a long-term deal with Charlton. But he wants to play. He, will, I see, he wants to. He think it would be good to play on the same side as Billy Mitchell. So... We'll see how that gets on, and uh, that is it for today's video, and uh, thank you for watching, and goodbye.